welcome back to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel and wrapping up my spring clean series. Of course, I'm dancing because I finally got my whole entire room scrapbook studio clean and organized. We're going to celebrate by giving you a tour and I have a fun giveaway, so stay tuned for that. So it took me a couple weeks to purge and organize and kind of straighten up my scrapbook studio. Typically every year I go through a big spring clean and let go of materials that I am not using. And that's what I did for this entire series. So if you've missed it, make sure you go and check out the first four videos in the series where I go through each section, breaking down each section, purging things that I don't want, organizing my materials based on how I scrapbook today. Which, by the way, before I forget, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe here to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. When you do, click the bell. That way you'll be notified each and every time I post new content here on this channel. Now, before we dig into this room tour, I want you to know a few things if you are new to the Victoria Marie Designs community. One, I am in this profession or in the craft and hobby industry professionally. So this is not only a place where I create, but this is a place where I work as well. And I'm a homeschool educator. So this is also a homeschool space where my daughter and I not only work on crafty projects for schooling, but also other things that we do for homeschool, her curriculum and that type of thing. So this is a multifunctional space. First and foremost, it had to be functional. I have to have things organized so not only I can work, but also teach and do other things. In addition to being the scrapbook and hobby industry, I also do other hobbies as well. So the space is set up so that not only can I do my scrapbook hobby, but I can do my other hobbies of interest. And I share the space with my daughter. So she has a spot there on the island where she has it all set up the way that she wants it. And she works on a variety of different crafts and things. There's a lot of new items in this studio and I'll point those out as we go along, but I am reusing a lot of stuff that I've had for a long time. So if you're new to scrapbooking or crafting, I want you to know that you do not need an entire space like this in order to do those things. You have, you determine what you need based on the types of crafts that you want to get into. And then you go from there. I used to be a kitchen table scrapper. I scrapbooked at the kitchen table and crafted at the kitchen table for many years. My scrapbook room has been in the corner of my dining room. It's been in the corner of my bedroom. So this is the first time that I've ever had such a large space dedicated to my craft, which also, of course, is not only my hobby, but it's also my career. So this space is set up to help support that. So I'm going to, in a second, going to give you a look into all the drawers and that type of thing, but I wanted to give an overview so you guys can see, kind of get a lay of the land of what this entire space looks like. This is a bonus space on the second uh, story of my home. This is above our garage. And I wasn't gonna use the space for my crafting studio. In fact, I had a room downstairs that I was using, but as the business grew, my needs grew. And so my spouse encouraged me to come and take up the space so that I have enough room to work, create, homeschool our daughter and everything in between. So that is what it's set up for. There's a lot of things I would like to do with this space, but it is functional first and foremost, and that's what I want. I am trying to achieve a lot of more closed storage in the space and I'll eventually get there. But for right now, it works just fine. So let's start out with the farthest cabinet here to the left hand side. This is what I refer to as my mixed media cabinet. It also houses some wood mount stamps, as you can see there, that's on a tiered stand that I purchased from a store called At Home. That's what's left of over 300 wood mount stamps that I had many years ago. So that's my small little collection. I also have this organizer here from Totally Tiffany that houses some smaller ink pads that I don't actually use, as well as some glitter that my daughter uses all the time. On the second shelf, I have some Zig watercolor markers, as well as my Copic markers and this acrylic organizers that I got from Joann's. Next to it is a glass container of smaller wood mount stamps. And then I have another one of these acrylic tiered organizers that I keep my Nouveau products, as well as the Pops of Color from scrapbook.com. Next up, I have this wicker tiered tray that I purchased from the Target dollar spot over a year ago that houses some of my Heidi Soft Color Shine, as well as some distress sprays. I have this tin from Ranger that houses some little rounds that I use with my Tim Holtz from Ranger alcohol inks, which are also housed in one of their containers. I love how that looks in the container. I can just grab what I need whenever I'm working with alcohol inks. And then any tools that support me in my use of the alcohol inks are stored in these boxes right next to the containers. These I got from Ikea. You just assemble them very easy. And I have things like the alcohol solution that you can use with the alcohol inks, as well as some other tools that support that particular craft. 
Underneath that, this is probably the hardest working part of the studio. We have some more mixed media elements. You can see we have some mason jars that have been well used as well as some brushes and some brayers. Not only do I use these products, my daughter uses them pretty much every day for a variety of projects that she works on. We have a lot of different mediums that we like, particularly Mod Podge, as well as some paint palettes and some other substrates that we use for mixed media, for our miniature builds and that type of thing. I can always tell when my kid is using these things because I see paint on the outside of those containers. But you know what? It's an art studio, so why not? So I have a container for paste and crowns as well as acrylic paint. We go through a ton of acrylic paint for a variety of projects. I also have some paste that I use with stencils as well as some watercolor pencils and just regular color pencils, pencils that I use for coloring. And then on the bottom shelf are some more acrylic paints as well as some makeup applicators that we use for with our acrylic paints when we're doing different techniques have some posca pens and i also have a section for watercolors i can see my daughter's been in the watercolors because there's drippies there on the outside of the containers a lot of these containers i've had for many years that i purchased from things like target dollar spot and that type of thing in this container i have all of my watercolor paint palettes and i also have a wood board next to it that i use whenever i am doing some watercolor work and then i have a set of watercolors in the back i cannot pronounce the name of those watercolors i got them them off of Amazon but I absolutely love them so all of that is housed there on the bottom shelf so as I mentioned this particular cabinet gets a lot of work pretty much every day my daughter does take care to keep it organized for me which I totally appreciate and everything's organized so I can grab it whenever I'm ready to use it Next up is the cube system that sits in the middle of the two cabinets. It houses my television as well as these 13 by 13 inch cubes. This is from Target, both the cubes as well as the cube shelf. Each cube is dedicated to a specific thing and about two thirds of the materials that I had in these cubes are now gone. I donated a lot of those materials. So here in this cube, I just have my Felicity Jane kits as well as my paper person kits, nice and organized, ready to go. I also have some other little collection kits. These are kits that were sent to me for various projects that I just kind of keep around so I can use up the materials. Once I'm done, I'll just shoot them right out of the studio. I also went through all of my pattern paper and organized it by manufacturer and designer. Now it's going to look like I have a lot, but I don't. I have maybe a handful of pattern paper left. I got rid of about two thirds of my pattern paper and I have a box in the back here <laughs> that's holding those papers up so they don't fall down, but they're all organized in these little plastic bags that I get in my hip kit club kits. So I wanted to reuse that. So anytime I need a pattern paper, I just dig right there in my pattern paper stash. Next to that, I have some Tim Holtz uh, materials there that I use for mixed media projects. And then down at the bottom, I just have some extra product that just came in that I just need to work in into my stash. Otherwise that bin is typically empty. I also have a box for my Kingston Craft materials. I am on the design team for Kingston Crafts. I dedicated another box to my chipboard and sticker sheets. I went through, purged a whole bunch of them, and this is what I have left. So I'm working really hard to work through these stickers. Some of these I've had for a very long time, and some of them, a lot of them I gave away. So those are nice, neat, and organized. I can just thumb through it whenever I'm ready to work on a project. Underneath, I have some seasonal materials. About two thirds or more of this went out the door and I only kept the things that were most current. I do have a little bit of Valentine there that I like to try to use up. And then I also have some Christmas, just a few little items there. This does not include my December daily elements, but just some extra Christmassy things. And if you've been around with me for a while, you know that I love my thickers and my letter stickers just in general. So I have three bins that are dedicated to my thickers. They are organized by color. Also, my little stickers are incorporated in there as well. I'm actually going to have my daughter work on uh, getting the little stickers out and putting them in their own little little bin so it makes it easier for me to get to it. But otherwise, uh, my thickers are there. I have three drawers dedicated to it. I'm okay with that because I use thickers a lot. And the cabinet next to that houses some albums and my embellishments. At the top, I have some magazine organizers that I think maybe I got from Ikea, but I can't remember. I also have some different albums. Some of them are complete and some of them are empty. I also have a creative reference library here, just some books and things I like to keep around, both for my scrapbooking and for miniature builds and things of that nature. I also have this fabric organizer that I got from Target that has houses some permanent markers that my daughter and I reach for every now and then. Now, one of my favorite parts of this particular cabinet are these acrylic bins that house all of my embellishments. So the first one are die cuts. This one here is chipboard and a few other little things. I also have a bin for my enamel dots. 
And then down below, I have a bin for more textured elements like acrylic, cork, flowers, brads, that type of thing. I wanted those in their own little section. So if I'm looking for a clip or a small paper flower or a flat back brad or whatever it may be, then I have two little bins dedicated to that. Now these clear organizers I purchased from Joann's um, and I believe they're only sold in store. I don't think they're sold online. I also have this organizer that I organize little tiny bits and pieces like little gems and that type of thing. Next to it, I have a bin that's just for little small sticker sheets like label stickers and such. In the back in this small container, I have some four by six and three by four pocket cards. And up front, I just have some little gems and sequin that I reach not only for scrapbooking, but also for card making. At the bottom, I have a container that's specifically for my Ellie Studio materials, as well as containers for my Ellie Edwards kits that come in and this extra product that I use with my Ellie Edwards projects, and then a little tin with some little bits and bobs that are from Ellie Edwards, all organized. So when I need it, I can just grab it and go. Now that I've reorganized these elements, I will go back and add labels. I like to wait until I have everything moved exactly where I want it before I go and add labels to the containers. Next up is the third Billy bookcase, and this one houses just additional albums and some other scrapbooking things, as well as materials for other hobbies that I participate in. I have some little mementos that were given to me by some of my community members. The headquarters Victoria Marie plaque was given to me by my buddy Angie Rushlow, and the little marquee sign was given to me by my buddy Sci-Fi Scrapper. I also have my December daily albums on that shelf as well. On the second shelf, I have a little fabric bin that has some Ally Edwards kits in them, as well as my bloom that has some smaller embellishments and this mini room kit. This is called Sam Study, and I customized this particular mini build by painting it and adding some scrapbook paper for the wallpaper. All I have to do is fill it in with all the accessories and that particular project will be done. On the third shelf, I have my One Little Word supplies. I am an instructor for the Ellie Edwards One Little Word uh, class, which is fantastic. I have so much fun. So I have this tiered organizer. I also have some little bins to keep some odds and ends, as well as my One Little Word album that I'm working out of this year. I want to make sure that all those materials were accessible because I work on this project quite often throughout the month. Now, the second third of the shelves, or the second half of this bookcase rather, houses my punch boards from We Are Memory Keepers. I'm also teaching myself how to embroider, so all of my embroidery kits as well as embroidery floss are on that shelf. And then here are all my miniature kits that I have just been collecting, and I can't wait to get into them. I've really gotten into miniature builds lately, and I like working on the kits as I'm starting out and learning this particular hobby. I also have some extra materials down here. I have specific tools that I use for my miniature builds, and then the accessories that are going to go in my current one that are in that acrylic bin there at the bottom and some extra felt from some projects that I worked on earlier this year. Next to this Billy Bookcase is the We Are Memory Keepers project cart. I used one of these when I was filming my class for scrapbook.com and I absolutely love it. So I came home and bought myself one. It's a great way to organize your projects. You can pull it over to your craft table, work on the projects you need, and then you can just roll it right out of the way when you're done. And next to my project cart is my coffee station. This is something that my daughter and I set up about a year ago because why not? We love coffee and tea. And this blue set of drawers used to actually be in our apartment before we built our house and I brought it up here in the craft studio to use for our coffee station. Next to it, I have a cart that has my December daily products on it. I'm still working through my December daily projects, so those are going to stay. And then I have some cords that I need to figure out how to cover up because I hate exposed cords, but for right now, it is what it is. Moving on to my computer desk, I have two Ikea desks that I have put together in the shape of an L, and I also have some Alex drawers. We'll go through that in a second. The chair I got from Wayfair, I'm not quite sure it's still available. And this mat here, I cannot remember off the top of my head the name of the company that I bought this for, but I will post the link in the description. It serves as just a general mat. I can write on it and I can use it as a mouse pad as well, which I really love. I have a board for my pins, which conveniently fell off my wall <laughs> before I filmed it, so it's there. I also have a calendar that I purchased from Michaels. I have some shelving from Ikea as well as some organizers. Those are all empty with the exception of one that houses some cards. And then here on my tabletop, I've just got some binders and my sketchbooks and that type of thing, my notebooks. I also have a We Are Memory Keepers Typecast Typewriter. Love this. I did a review on it when it first came out and that video is still available here on my channel. And then next to that, I have an organizer from my files from 31. Underneath my desk, I have projects, well, material that come in for projects that I'm working on for contract purposes. So that sits under my desk for now until I'm ready to work on those things. Moving on to the Alex drawers, I went through and did a deep purge and organization. 
Here at the top, I've got some markers, pens, pencils, just some general office things. The second drawer houses some post-it notes, paper clips, push pens, and some notepads that I use from time to time. The third drawer has my label maker as well as some lighters because I do light soy candles here in my studio as well as some lotion and lip gloss at the ready. The fourth drawer houses some containers that I purchased from Michaels and this is to corral little bits and bobs that I need to get to but I don't want them strewn all over the drawer. I also have some packing tape and some envelopes at the ready. And the last drawer houses just some small equipment as well as my mic that I use whenever I am doing voiceovers for videos. Next up, let's take a look at where I house my stamps and paper, washi tape and whatnot. I love this area of my studio. There are two pieces here that are new, the Target cube system, and then of course the Ikea Alex drawers that you see there to the right hand side. In the middle are some recollection cubes from Michaels. Those are no longer sold. They actually have a new brand of organizers. And I absolutely love these little cubes. They've been with me forever. I also have this embellishment stadium that's no, no longer available. I'm just housing some little mementos there as well as my Funko Pops. And then I also like to store just things that help me stay motivated and creative and inspired. So I have a little owl pillow that was purchased from Etsy, as well as some embroidery and some felt projects that I made recently. So let's look at my stamp storage. This particular part of my studio is still in progress. I went through last year and purged and organized a bunch of my stamps and I adopted this organization system that I learned from Jennifer McGuire who is a card maker. I know many of you are probably familiar with her and what I did was I created these dividers out of just cheap cardstock and I laminated them using my meat machine and then all of my stamps go into these Avery L pockets and I buy the size based on the size of the stamps all of my acrylic stamps that is. The way that I have this organized is by category then by manufacturer or designer and it's in alphabetical order because when I create my brain works on categories not necessarily manufacturer or designer and if the acrylic stamp has a matching die then I put that in the back along with a magnetic sheet so I can easily get to the dies and whenever I need to use them and I will do a separate video once I get this whole system set up. I also have some larger stamps these are like five by seven or larger that are in these acrylic bins. These bins I purchased from at home the divided bins up top I purchased from Amazon. I also have some extra stamps and dies that I need to work into this system and I'm going to have my daughter work on that this summer. And then for my larger stamp set like from Altenew and the Ton. These are huge stamp sets. I think they're like eight by 10 stamp sets. I just have those in regular eight and a half by 11 page protectors. And then if they have a die, then I put those on a magnetic sheet that I purchased from Amazon. And those go into an acrylic magazine organizer. I've had this thing for a long time. I probably purchased it at Target. And I just go ahead and set those right in there. Again, this is still a work in progress as I have more stamps that have come in. I need to work them into the system and kind of, you know, kind of figure it out a little bit. But so far, I'm really enjoying how the stamp system came together. It took me months <laughs> or weeks rather to get the stamp system together, but it'll all be completed hopefully uh, within this year, sometime this year. I also have an acrylic storage bin. This is also from at home. I purchased this probably about three or four years ago that houses my washi tape. I have my blender brushes from Taylor Expressions as well as another acrylic bin. This was from Joann's and I have my six by eight and six by six paper pads. Underneath that, I have my uh, solid cardstock storage, eight and a half by 11 on the first part and then 12 by 12 on the second part. These cube systems I've had for a very, very long time and they just keep going and going. So I decide to keep it. I also put some of my cardstock in these eight and a half by 11 page protectors. That way I can also put the scraps along with it. I am gonna purchase some different types of organizers from Stampin' Storage down the road, but for right now, that's my temporary solution. So I have all my white cardstock, vellum, all my color cardstock, eight and a half by 11, and there at the bottom, I have 12 by 12. On the left-hand side are all my specialty papers. And then I have some 12 by 12 uh, solid cardstock, both black, white, and color cardstock here in these cubes. These cubes have been with me for a very long time. Next up, I have a set of cube drawers. Again, this is from Recollections from Michaels. This particular style is no longer available. They have something called Neat and Tidy. I can't remember the name of the collection, but nonetheless, these have been around for a while. The first drawer are my sewing notions. I also have some fabric fuse because my daughter's a ballet dancer and I'm forever altering her leotards. Then I also have some blender brushes that I use for mixed media and other things. Next drawer are some reinkers as well as some stickles. I also have a drawer for fibers. I use a lot of twine, so that's what I have a lot of in that particular drawer. 
I also have another drawer set that houses my Nouveau Gilding Flakes, my Glitter Glitz from Gina K, some Nouveau Paste, as well as some products from Tim Holtz. I like to keep these at the ready. I use them typically for card making, but some other things too. I also have a drawer of roller date stamps. These organizers, I think I may have gotten those from at home last year. I also have a personalized stamp that my friend Angie Rushlow had made for me a couple of years ago and she presented that to me at one of my retreats. I have a drawer for my hot glue guns as well as my fuse, which I didn't know where my fuse tool was until I cleaned up my Alex drawer. So now that has a home. I also have a drawer for my card making supplies as well. So whenever I'm making a card, I can just grab what I need and go. My daughter likes to access these drawers as well because she makes cards for friends and relatives as well. Moving on to my second set of Alex drawers. These are actually wider and a little bit shorter than the, the other Alex drawers I just showed you. So this is a different style. I have two sets stacked on top of each other. If you're gonna do this, you wanna make sure you mount it to the wall, particularly if you have little kids or pets in the home. On top of the drawer, I have some dolls that are just hanging out, two Barbies and of course, Princess Tiana. I have some custom Disney Princess Tiana ears that I had made for my last trip and then little orange birds just sitting there hanging out. Now in these drawers, I have a bunch of tools and some ink pads. So starting out with the first drawer, I have a make art station. I have two, the large one and the small one, as well as the tools that go with it. I like to have all of the accessories to my tools housed in one space. I have a glass mat, a piercing tool, as well as a scoreboard. The next drawer, I have a circle uh, cutter tool, as well as some extra little smaller tools there, just at the ready if I need them. And then I also have these really fun ink stands from a company called Ink Stand. You can put your ink pads in there and it holds them while you're using them so they're not slipping around everywhere. Next up is my embossing drawer. I have all of my embossing powders here and I only purchase colors that I absolutely love and I know that I'm going to use. And they're from different companies. And then all of the tools and things that support heat embossing are in this drawer as well, including the watermark inks that I like to use whenever I'm heat embossing. The next drawer houses my Misty stamp platforms. Yes, I use all four of these. I have a 12 by 12 one for scrapbooking or larger projects. I have the regular size one and I have the mini and they all get a workout here in the studio. In addition to the stamp platforms, I also have the accessories that go with the stamp platforms like positioners and that type of thing. And then I have some little stamp pressing tools that help whenever you're doing repetitive stamping. Next drawer is one of my favorites is all of my adhesives. I go through adhesives like crazy. And so I like to make sure that I have a good amount of adhesives at hand and I have various different types of adhesives for different projects. So I have some adhesive dots and squares. I also have some refills for my most used adhesives, my roller adhesives, pixie spray. I also have some extra little bits and bobs there. The next drawer houses my Zots, as well as my Xyron sticker maker, and then some larger adhesive tools that I use for larger projects, and then some extra things at the ready. And the last drawer of adhesives are my roller adhesives of various widths and dimension. I also have some foam sticky strips from Taylor Expression, some foam sheets from scrapbook.com, as well as some foam strips from Waffle Flower. I go through all of these like crazy, so I like to make sure that I have a lot of foam adhesive at hand and at the ready. The next bank of drawers houses all of my ink pads and I use these ink pads on a regular basis. The first drawer are my distress ink pads. I did in these drawers add in the shelf liner. It's a grip shelf liner so that the ink pads don't roll all over the place in my drawers. And this is how I'm storing them for right now. I want to store them in a drawer. I have my distress inks there, my oxides on the right hand or the left hand side and then my minis on the back. But I wanted to store my inks like this because it was just easier for me to see them and access them. And of course, I'm trying to go for that closed storage look. And so this was a part of that plan. So all of my stamping inks went into the Alex drawers. And I just have them propped up on each other. I can see the colors. I can easily access them. And I have a variety of different inks from dye-based inks, and hybrid inks from different manufacturers. Some of this was sent to me, some of it was gifted, and some of it I purchased. But I do use all of these inks for various projects. Some of them have different formulations. A lot of them have different colors and hues. And so it's really fun to have different sets. Do you need all this ink? No, <laughs> you don't need all this ink. But I do enjoy having some variety of the types of inks that I use for a variety of projects. So I have some scrapbook.com, some Hero Arts, some of the ton stamping ink, which is fantastic, as well as stamping ink from close to my heart.
Next to my Alex drawers, I have some craft mats as well as some foam board that I use for picture taking and a cork board that eventually will go up on the wall <laughs> right next to the Alex drawers. I don't have a space to keep this right now, so it's just kind of sitting there temporarily until those things have a home. Now in my craft room, I like to have stations. So I set up a station for my die cutting needs as well as my printing needs. On this first table, it's just an old Ikea table that's seen better days, but it's still functional. I have my Epson PM400 printer. It prints up to five by seven photos. And I also have a Canon all-in-one crafters printer. This printer prints up to, I believe, 15 inches. So you can use it for your regular photo printing, regular everyday printing, as well as large format printing. Next to it, I have little file trays here that house my photo paper. I've had these trays for many years. So I have four by six, five by seven, and eight and a half by 11 photo paper at the ready. I also have my manual die cutting machine from Spellbinders. I also have the Glimmer Hot Foil machine as well, which I'm completely obsessed with and have been experimenting with that, along with the accessories and the tools that go to that system. That's sitting in an old pencil case or pencil container that I've had probably for over 20 years. And then of course I have this little wicker tray from the Target Dollar Spot that kind of makes it a little bit more decorative and warm over there in the space. So all those materials are set up, or tools rather, are set up and ready to go. Now those machines are sitting on my old TV stand that I'm repurposing temporarily until I get closed storage for this part of my craft room. Next up is my Target Cube system, which houses my Cricut Explore Air 2, which I recently got mainly because it's mint green. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I also have the tools that support that machine. And then next to that, I have my Gemini by Crafters Companion. This is an electronic die cutting and embossing machine. And I have this sitting on a totally Tiffany project board. I believe that's what it's called. It's a rotating project board. Now I got this idea from Kathy Zilski who purchased this project board to help her rotate this machine because you do have to have some clearance when you're running the plates. And sometimes you have to reposition the machine to do that. So this project board just makes it easier to move that heavy machine. Next up, I have an acrylic bin here that houses my cutting plates for my Gemini as well as some foil for my Glimmer machine. I also have my metal dies. These dies don't have coordinating stamps. They're just standalone metal dies. I have some cover plates and some other dies here and they're stored much like my acrylic stamps. I do have dividers that I made and then I have some extra dies that just need to be worked uh, into that. Those dividers are made with some cardstock and my label maker and I laminated them using my meat machine. I also have sort of a similar setup here for my embossing folders. I have some small embossing folders, five by seven, as well as some larger metal dies that are stored in Avery L pockets. And I do have some magnetic sheets that hold the dies in place so they're not swimming all over the little plastic envelopes. Underneath, I have a bin, this little wicker bin that houses some extra tools. I do have a silhouette die cutting machine that I don't have out now, but I have some cutting blades in that bin. I also have a brayer that I purchased when I got my Cricut machine. I also have some different cords and things that go to say my sewing machine and some other electronic materials that I may not use all the time, but I definitely need to have those cords at the ready. And then I have some manuals there on the side for the various machines that I have in that particular section. I also have a Singer sewing machine that actually just got back from the shop this past Christmas. And so I need to pull her out and put her to good use. This last bin, I have my meat machine. I don't use it often, so it just stays in here. I also have some vinyl kits that I'm wanting to try out with my Cricut machine. And then I have some plates for my Gemini electronic die cutting and embossing machine that I keep there. And then this little organ, or not an organizer, that looks like a little trash bin that you can affix to a desk. And I think I'll take that to a crop one day. As I mentioned before, I like having stations here in my craft studio. So this printing and die cutting station helps me work more efficiently. I have all the tools at the ready anytime that I wanna use any of my machines. And I actually use the machines because they're out, they're plugged in and ready to go. Now the last section of the craft room that I wanna share with you is the craft island. Now this is something that I've always wanted. This is a standing height kitchen counter or kitchen islands rather there's two of them i purchased them from wayfair they have been sold out for months but according to wayfair at the time that i'm recording this video they will have a new stock of them coming in in may so i posted a link in the description so check it out on one half of the craft island is a spot for where my daughter crafts. She has this organized based on how she crafts and what project she's working on. So right now she's making some clothing for her Barbie dolls. She has her materials that she needs for whatever it is that she's working on, painting, that type of thing. And I try not to gatekeep this. I let her organize that as best as she wants to. 
as good as a 12 year old's going to. We also have glass mats. She has one. I also have one. These are from We Are Memory Keepers. You can use them for general crafting and you can also use them for mixed media. Now here's my side of the craft island. Again, I have a We Are Memory Keepers glass mat and I interchange them. Sometimes I use the glass mat. Sometimes I use my self healing mats. Underneath on the shelves, I have a bin for my acrylic blocks and I have several because I do a lot of stamping. And if you are familiar with stamping, then you know that you don't always wanna change your stamp off of one block. So you need multiples to help you get the job done. I also have a bin for my heat tools as well as a We Are Memory Keepers hole punch uh, tool as well. It has multiple sizes of holes there. And I also have a bin for my punches and my corner chompers or corner croppers <laughs> from We Are Memory Keepers, I'm forgetting the name. All those tools housed ready to go whenever I need them. Now on the top shelf, I have some smaller tools. I have this little uh, ceramic owl that has some of my scissors, larger scissors like my Tim Holtz big old big daddy scissors that I have there. I also have this little spinning caddy that I purchased at Joann's and I needed a little something that I can put on my craft desk whenever I'm working. So if I have tools or pencils or whatnot, then I can just put those there temporarily as I'm using those tools. Otherwise, I like my surface nice and clean. I have a spell binders, little magnetic die holder that I use when I'm using my metal dies. And I also have this ceramic little cup that I purchased from Michaels probably five or six years ago that houses my stamp chamois to keep it nice and moist whenever I am stamping. Otherwise, I like to dry it out if I know I'm not gonna be doing any stamping for the time being. Next to that, I have some little trays and things that I like to use, little containers uh, when I'm working with jewels or gems, smaller embellishments, that type of thing. I also have my We Are Memory Keeper little mini vac. I love this tool. It's great because it picks up glitter and dust and all kinds of fun things. I have the spoon rest that I made from a place called Cloth and Glaze, and I'm using this to kind of mount my hot glue gun on when I'm using it. It's really fun, and plus it's just pretty. I have some other little trays here that I've purchased or were given to me. This little camera was given to me by one of my crafty friends named Sarah Stanley. So Sarah, if you're watching this, thank you so much. I still have it. And I use those just for little bits and bobs whenever I am crafting. Next to that, I have some smaller bins, much like the larger bins on the bottom shelf. I have some double-sided adhesive. These are things that I reach for often whenever I'm crafting, so I want them at the ready. I also have two smaller bins for liquid adhesives that I use not only for my paper crafting projects, but I use a variety of adhesives when I'm working on miniature builds. I have a bin for my writing tools where essentially my journaling pens and other things that I use for writing purposes. I put a piece of cardstock there on the side because you can see there's handles on those small bins and guess what? Those pins were falling out. <laughs> So I kind of jimmy rigged that a little bit so the pens stay in the container. I also have a container of stamping ink. This is black stamping ink, variety of different types of inks that I use that I just need real quick whenever I'm stamping on a project. I keep those there. Then I have a bin for just some regular brushes and paint brushes as well as little glitter brushes just to add a touch of glitter and sparkle to a project. One of the reasons why I bought these kitchen islands is because they had a drawer and I no longer desired to store my tools on top of my desk when they're not in use. I wanted everything in a drawer. So I purchased some little organizers and I believe these are from at home or maybe Target, I can't remember. And these drawers house my most used tools. So I have a couple of ink pads, I have some paper trimmers or some uh, little cutting blades rather, my tiny attacher, things of that nature. In the second drawer, I have some adhesives, some scissors, some liquid glue that I reach for most of the time. All of these things nice, neat and organized. So whenever I'm working on a craft project, I can just grab what I need and then I can replenish the tools or any of the products as necessary. On the side of the craft island, I have another Target cube. On top of the cube, I have a letter organizer that I purchased from a store called Tuesday Morning. And then I also have this little tray from the Target dollar spot that I bought probably three years ago. And I use that whenever I'm working with small embellishments. I also have this tiered organizer that I probably purchased at Tuesday morning a long time ago. And that just houses sort of refill adhesives and things that I need right at the ready. And so I have that there on top and I will replenish that as needed. Underneath, I have some of my scrapbooks that are temporarily housed here, as well as my paper trimmers. I have several that I like to use from my Tim Holtz tonic trimmer, as well as a um, creative memories trimmer, and then another larger tonic trimmer. I have the handle stored underneath the trimmer for right now, so I don't knock it off. Next to that, I have this file organizer that I purchased from Target, and I purchased specifically to house scrap paper that I reach for 
all the time. So I'm always needing a scrap of white paper, a scrap of vellum, and then certain colors. So I had my daughter organize this for me and she made the labels with her handwriting on it, which I absolutely love. So anytime that I'm working with a white paper scrap, it'll go back in here because I usually use white paper scraps all the time. The same for vellum. So if I cut a piece of vellum, I'm going to put it right in there because I reach for it constantly. And then I have some darker paper and some specialty paper. So anytime that I need one of those three substrates, I will go here first before I cut into a full sheet. And lastly, I just wanted to point out that in your creative space, I believe it's important to have items around you that make you smile <laughs> and make you happy. My daughter recently started purging some of her dolls and stuffed animals, and some of them were things that I gave her when she was little. And so I went and got my childhood dolls and then a couple of the dolls that she had gotten some of her first dolls that she had gotten, and now they're hanging out here in the craft room. This little buddy here is at least 40 years old, at least as old as I am, and I'm 41, and I got this when I was little, I wanna say from my grandmother, and it's one of the only toys that I have that I've had for as long as I've been alive. And so of course, I wanna make sure that there's a spot for her here in my craft room, along with all these wonderful little plushies that make me smile. Well, if you stuck with me throughout this whole tour, congratulations, you are absolutely wonderful. Let me tell you about the fun giveaway that I am hosting. If you will, if you don't mind, and if you are interested in winning a $25 gift card to stamp in storage in the comment section below, I would like for you to tell me what do you like the most about your scrapbook space or your crafty space? It doesn't matter if you have a full room, if you scrapbook in the corner, if you converted a closet, what do you like the most about your scrappy space? Make sure you post your response in the comment section below and I will pick a winner by April 22nd. So you have until the 22nd to play along. That's April 22nd, 2022 to play along. You go ahead and post your response in the comment section. What do you like the most about your scrappy space? So you will be eligible to win a $25 gift card to stamp and storage. This giveaway is not being sponsored. This is something that I am doing via Victoria Marie Designs. The details for the giveaway will be posted in the description box. Again, you'll have until April 22nd to play along and I will announce a winner the following week. Thanks so much for joining me on my updated scrapbook room tour. If you have any questions, post them down in the comment section below. And as always, if you're new around these parts, hit that subscribe button, click the bell. That way you'll be notified each and every time a new video is posted. I'll see you in the next one.